then why do we worry? Amen. <laughs> then why do we worry? If you really believe you're blessed and highly favored, why do you fear and worry? You need to ask yourself that question. Then why do I fret? Why do I try to fix things? Why do I believe in what man says instead of what God says? There's a difference. There's the big difference. Amen? Amen. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> God is good every day and all the time. There's a place in the spirit that God wants us to live. Not just when we feel like it. Gosh. There we go. It's a place where it's complete surrender. Life in the spirit is totally different than life in the physical. Amen. See, there's either life in the natural, life in the carnal, or life in the spirit. The natural man can't comprehend the things. The carnal man is a Christian that doesn't live in the spirit. But then there's the new man that lives in the spirit. That's life in the spirit. That means that you and I have taken that new divine nature of God and allowed it to express himself through us and live through us. See, he wants to live through you and me and everything that we do. But so many times we don't want to let go of control. Or there are certain things that we don't let go of to allow him to have his way. See, you may allow him to have certain control in certain areas of your life, but you allow him to have it all. There's a difference. It's amazing how we can trust God for certain things, but we can't trust him for other things. That's called carnality. That's not life in the spirit. Life in the spirit is completely sold out. Completely. No matter what is happening. You know that everything's going to work to the good. You know that if he's with you, who can be against you? You know that you don't need to fear, fret, or want. He's going to make it happen. The only thing that prevents him from making it happen is you and I. That's the only thing. You can blame the devil, but we have dominion over the devil. Does he try to interfere? Yes. He's trying to get us on position. Positioning is everything. If you hit a baseball and you're playing a sport, you can't skip first base, a run, stay there at home run and step on the plate. It will not be considered a home run. You have to go to first base, second base, third base, then home. So there's no shortcuts to that arena. Every one of them is a level to make the score. It's a position. And there is a position in the spirit that you and I must learn to live. And it's an area where keeping unity or jointness with the Lord. Unity is essential. If you are not unified in the spirit with God, then you're separated. If you're not a person that promotes unity or peace, then you are separated. Amen. It's impossible. Because that's what Jesus came to. He didn't come to please people. He came to please the Father. But in hope by pleasing the Father, it would move on the people. So we're still in that same circumstance. Now that we are born of the Spirit, born again of the Spirit, our soul needs still conversion. Our flesh still needs to be maintained as crucified. Those two areas are against you. They're going to be working for us. That's where the anointing comes in. 
The anointing is what causes your soul and your spirit, to, your soul and your flesh, to work for Christ. Does everybody understand that? See, so many people live out of the soul and not out of the spirit because they allow their emotions to dictate everything. They live by their feelings. If they don't feel God, they don't believe God's there. If they don't feel healed, they don't believe they're healed. If they don't feel this, they don't believe it because they live a life of feeling. And it's not about a life of feeling. It's about truth. That's where you receive, you believe, and you execute. You execute by gratefulness and thanksgiving. Amen. You execute by now allowing those feelings to overtake you. You execute by releasing the prophetic word that was written for me and you to overcome all things that's multidimensional. That the enemy can't combat because he was created by the word. Think about that. So the same word that created Satan is the same word that's going to destroy him. And you and I have the power and the dominion to do that. But the battlefield is in the mind. It's the frequency of Satan's kingdom to always bring constant confusion or frustration or fear. But see, the first thing is, is by having the spirit of God in us, we ought to know these things. We shouldn't fall back into those cycles again. Because we already know it. But see, there must be something very, very important. For every believer, there must be a willing desire. And the devil knows whether you have a willing desire. You have a willing desire to keep unity and peace. You have a willing desire to please God. You have a willing desire to combat the enemy. You have a willing desire to fulfill the destiny that's been predestined for you. You must have a willing desire To overcome. God is not looking for perfect people, scholars, or people getting memorized the Bible. He's looking for something that's will, someone that's willing. King David made many mistakes. Boy, did he make some mistakes. But he was a man after God's heart. Why? Because he had a willing desire to please God, even when he blew it. He got up and he did it again. He didn't live from the past. Amen. He actually lived from the future. Look at the proclamations that he wrote in the Psalms. Phenomenal. Turn to Galatians chapter 5. Life in the Spirit. Life in the Spirit is victorious. That doesn't mean you won't go through stuff, but you'll go through it. Galatians chapter 5, starting at verse 1. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, I'm sorry, it's chapter 4. Oh, wait a minute. It is chapter 4. I'm in the wrong location again. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Let's speak it. Stand what? Fast. When you see stand fast, it means endure. Don't get moved. Stand fast or for in the liberty or the freedom by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now you got to remember Paul was writing this to the church in Galatians. And these individuals fell back into bondage. They began to worship other gods. Paul had to write them, let them know. In verse 2 he says, Indeed I, Paul, say to you that if you are circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing, because they wanted to fall back into the religious traditions. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he's a debtor to keep the whole law. 
You have become estranged from Christ. Christ here is the anointing. The eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. Why? Because you attempt to be justified by your works, your acts, and your deeds. Your works, your acts, your deeds, and even your dress. Let me dress holy. There's a lot of holy dressers out there. But they're wolves. <laughs> Hallelujah. You have become estranged from the anointing in you as you, had, you who attempt to be justified again by your works, your deeds, your dress and so forth. You have fallen from grace or from the plan of God. For we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through, through love. So your faith is your connection to the presence of God. He said you ran well who hindered you from obeying the truth. This persuasion does not come from him who calls you a little leaven, leavens the whole lump. It only takes one little Seed, one little leaven, and the whole thing blows up. That's all you have to do is connect and agree with something, and it can access and blow it all up. So we ought to stand fast in the freedom which Christ paid for each and every one of us. And again, that takes cooperation with the Father. Now we pay the price of cooperation to maintain freedom. And free others. That's a price that you and I pay. To maintain our own freedom and to free others from the law of judgment. Because the law represents judgment. And this arena is where we want to get into is in the relationship with the Father through Jesus by the Holy Spirit. This is called life in the Spirit. It is a life of freedom and a life of victory and a life of unity. It is a life of freedom, it is a life of victory, and it is a life of unity. Because there cannot be freedom without unity. Life in the spirit is a battle to keep unity. Amen. It is a constant battle. Ephesians 4. We talk about people being spirit-filled. We talk about all kinds of things. Listen, you can be so-called spirit-filled and still not have a life in the spirit. You can speak in tongues and still have not a life in the spirit. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 1, let's speak. I therefore the prisoner of the Lord, I therefore prisoner of the Lord, I therefore prisoner, prisoner of the Lord. In other words, he is so unified to God, he calls himself a prisoner. Beseech you to walk worthy of your calling with which you were called, with all loneliness and gentleness, with all suffering and bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the what? The unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. That means you need to forgive and hold no bitterness or resentment. Amen. Amen. That means you need to forgive, hold no bitterness and resentment by your conduct, your words, and your decisions. It's amazing how many people still hold things towards one another, but I'll tell you, if this country got invaded by another nation, everybody come together real quick. <laughs> you know, they didn't turn over the other people to the invaders. Verse 4, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and one Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all, you all. 
To each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he, is, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this he ascended, what does it mean that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth? And that's where he took the keys of death, hell, and the grave away from Satan and authority. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edification of the body of Christ, till we all come to the what? Unity of the faith. In other words, till we all come to the reality of the connection and the, and, and, and the earnest desire to be connected to the presence of God. And of the knowledge of the Son of God. See, there's a difference between knowledge and revelation knowledge. You can read the Bible and have knowledge, but only through the Spirit of God brings revelation knowledge. And revelation knowledge never puffs up. It brings humility. Knowledge puffs up. It promotes pride. Till we all come to the unity, the faith, and the knowledge of the Son of God to a what? A perfect man to the measure, the stature of the fullness of the anointing. There's something very important here because it is through unity where the anointing is released. Amen. And only the anointing releases life. Come on, grab hold of this. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Why does he say this? He says, because the anointing will teach you all things. If you're really in the anointing, you'll know. You won't be tricked. That's called life in the spirit. It's life in the anointing. But speaking the truth in love. Remember, God is love. He came to release love. He came to express love. The greatest expression of his love was on the cross. from whom the whole body joint and knit together by what? Every joint does what? Supplies according to the effect of working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself. So there must be a cooperation, a joint cooperation that's called unity. Life in the spirit is a battle to keep the unity. And we want to keep the unity with those like-minded. Does everybody understand that? Disagreements doesn't mean you're not like-minded. It means that you have another view sometimes. We want to keep unity with those like-minded in the spirit. That's joint and knit together. Well, to get the work done. <laughs> and the word warns us warns us over and over, be careful who you take company with. Why? Because if you're involved with someone that's promoting corruption, you're going to become corrupted. In Romans chapter 8, life in the spirit. Romans chapter 8 and verse 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will what? Die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will what? Live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. How can you be led if you're not unified with Him? You can't. You can say you're being led, but if you're not united with Him and one with Him, you can't be led. Why? Because 
It, the self does not communicate with the anointing. Only the new creation communicates with the anointing. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. Now you've got to look at this. If you're led by the Spirit of God, you have to look at Jesus as being called the Son of God. Same thing of what how he lived is how we're to live. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of what? Adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then what? Heirs of God and what? Joint heirs, joint heirs, that's unity. That we are joint heirs with Christ, the anointing, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be what? Glorified together. So, I consider that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be complained about. Or compared with the glory which shall be revealed in what? In us. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willing to it because of him was subjected it in hope, because the creation itself also will be delivered up from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Do you understand that the earth is corrupted? The only thing that's restraining full corruption from taking over is you and I. Why? Now, how is it you and I? Because the anointing that's in us, the Christ that's in us, if we're allowing him to reign, if we're allowing him access to every part of our life, or if we're letting him loose, because he will not cooperate with anything you will not let him. Amen? For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. Not only that, but we who also have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption of the redemption of your what? The rest of you, your body. So if we know that the earth is corrupted, and we know that the people of the earth are also corrupted, now, this may sound strange to you because I call them the people of the earth. You and I are no longer the people of the earth. We are another race. And we must begin to look at that. We are another race. We are an eternal race, not a temporary race. That's why the world doesn't understand us until they get unplugged. But the people of the earth serve the ruler of the earth and they live a life of fear and corruption. We're not to live that life. We're not to live a life of fear and corruption. We're not to live a life of manipulation, lying, deception. We're not to live that life anymore. It's supposed to be over with. We're supposed to be living a life of trust, truth, righteousness, justice, peace, Enjoy. We're to be expressing the character of Christ in everywhere we go and releasing the fragrance of God. No matter what it is, wherever you are, no matter what circumstance. It's got nothing to do with how you feel. We've got to come out of that arena and that realm that soulish living is no good. It's not a life of a Christian. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. We, if you can't, <laughs> listen, you can't be led unless you're joined with the Spirit. We are joint heirs with Christ, anointing through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Why do you think the devil refuses, get, gets involved in so many denominational doctrines and says, there's no such thing as the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Because he knows that if they can get joined with the anointing, that's what the devil fears. It's the anointing that destroys the gates of hell. It's the anointing that is used for binding and loosening. It is the anointing. 
that the price was paid for me and you. Jesus was the anointed one in his anointing. And he came to release it to me and you. Amen. We first must be joined to Christ and the anointing. Does everybody get it? That's the first unity. We must be joined to Christ and the anointing. The word says that man will leave his mother and father and be joined to their spouse. Well, that's where you and I must, in other words, he's talking about leaving earthly now. Earthly people. We are to leave the earthly life living realm and start living in the spirit. That's life in the spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. First Corinthians 1 and verse 4. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus that you were enriched in everything by him in all utterance and all knowledge even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come short in no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. That we may be what? Blameless. God is faithful, by whom you were called into the what? Fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ Christ. Our Lord, now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you. Well, if there's no division, then there is unity. But that you be perfectly what? Joined together in the same mind, in the same thoughts, in the same attitudes as Christ. The same focus and in the same judgment. Does everybody see this? Fellowship of the Son of God and perfectly joined together. Same thought, same mind, same judgment. In other words, same convictions. Same convictions. In 1 Corinthians 6, Life in the Spirit is dependent on maintaining unity. You can't be one who says, I live the life in the Spirit if you're not one that promotes unity. Galatians 5, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 6, shish kebab. Verse 15. Yoo-hoo. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a what? Harlot. So God looks at us. Listen, what you agree with, you become joined with. I'm going to say this again because some people still don't stink and get it. What you agree with up here, you become joined with. And God will look at it as that as a harlotry, corruption, unrighteousness, or righteous injustice. What you agree with in your thoughts, in your attitudes, in your motives, you become joined with. And when you become joined with something, you receive it. It becomes a part of you. It becomes entangled with you. It has access to the rest of you also. Well, I only did this one little thing. Yeah, but you became joined with it. You agreed with it. Now it became entangled with it. That's where the word, as soldiers of Christ, do not be entangled with the affairs of the world. That means they're agreeing and enjoining something. And when that is joined, it has access to the rest of you. Is everybody okay? 
Oh, hallelujah. Verse 16. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become what? One flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. He who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Now, intimacy with God. I'm trying to express this without making it perverse. It's like intercourse. It's oneness with him. It's not a sexual motive. It's such a oneness with him that there's love. Intimacy with God. And when there's intimacy, there's usually an offspring from it. So when you and I have this in intimacy with the Lord, it brings a spiritual birthing of revelation of something special that he wants to release into this realm. And it can only be released from you. Jesus had that special intimacy with the Father and he released the Holy Spirit into this realm. Amen. Come on, look at this. This is so important. This is why it's so important that you must battle and fight for unity. Get your stinky opinions out, your offenses out of the way. Get everything out of the way and fight for unity. What does it matter? Doesn't it only matter what the end result is? Taking over the earth? Amen. Re rescuing as many souls as possible? Driving out demonic forces? Oh, hallelujah. Join to Christ, not other gods, or you become a harlot. Don't be joined to sin, you become a harlot. In the anointing, I'm sorry, in unity is where the anointing is released. This is where the anointing needs a break. <laughs> All the worldly bondages that we've entangled ourselves with or others with. Does everybody get it? See, so we become joined with Christ, we become unified together, the anointing's released. But when we come joined with other things, a voice of a stranger, any desire, wrong attitude, whatever, when we become joined with them, it becomes a corruption or a harlot, what he calls it. Now it needs to be broke. And it can only be broke through the anointing. This is where the anointing needs to break the yoke of the worldly bondages to be rejoined back to the Lord. That's called life in the Spirit. It's to be joined in the Spirit of unity. Matthew 18. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew 18. Verse 18. Surely I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And again I say to you, that if two of you, what? Agree, that's joint. On earth, concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Wow. So God promotes unity. He doesn't promote division. Where there's division, he's not in the midst. Amen. United we stand. With each other in his word and in his presence, united we stand. United we can overcome. Remember, a house divided can't stand. Amen. 
Luke 10, verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them out, what? Two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, harvest, the harvest is surely great, but laborers are few. Therefore pray for the Lord of the harvest and send out laborers into this harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among what? Wolves. That's why he sent them out two by two. Why? Unity. Unity. Psalm 133. Oh, happy day. Bad company corrupts good habits. You know, so many times when your brother starts talking about garbage, shut him up. Amen. Don't let him babble on. It's like, man, shut up. I don't want to hear this stuff. Don't corrupt me. Go in the bathroom, shut the door, and look in the mirror. And talk to the person in the mirror. That's where you release your complaints. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. You know, complaining doesn't do anything, amen? amen? Just entangles more. See, what comes out of your mouth, the enemy says, oh, I got him. I got him. Agree, 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 agree. Join, 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 join. Harlot, harlot, harlot. Corrupt, corrupt, corrupt. Access, access, access. Doubt, doubt, doubt. Fear, fear. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Me, me, me. Maybe I should have been a rapper. <laughs> I'd have to cast out my own devils. Can you imagine me as a rapper? Dear God, have mercy. <laughs> you know what a Christian rapper is? It's a babbler. Anyways, <laughs> Psalm 133. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to do what? Do, man, I, come on, I want to hear everyone say this. Let's start at verse 1. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Now watch what happens. It is like the precious oil. What's the oil represent? Anointing. The anointing. Upon the head of running down the beard of Aaron, running down the garments, the edge of his garments, and it's changing his own attitude and motives. It's like the dew of Hermon descending upon the Mount of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. So, unity will release the anointing. That's why we come corporately, we worship together in unity, it releases the anointing. And the anointing releases life. That's why the enemy loves to keep people out of fellowship. And they still don't get it. They don't get it. It's because they're carnal. Again, unity. It is good for brethren to dwell together in unity. It releases the anointing, and the anointing releases life. Praise God. Hebrews 4. Hebrew. Glory. Freedom. And with the Spirit of the Lord, there's freedom. Verse 11. Hebrews 4, verse 11. Therefore, let 
Therefore, let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of the soul and spirit and jo of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the what? The heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. We must not only be joined to the presence of God, to the anointing, but of course, this anointing is also known as the word. It's called truth. His presence, power, and truth. So we must be joined to the word of life in the spirit of life. It is to obtain the anointing so it can break every yoke of bondage in our lives. See, we look at there are things that we entangle ourselves and don't even know. But if you maintain a consistency of unity and the anointing, the anointing will constantly break things off. It constantly breaks things off. 2 Corinthians 6. Hallelujah. That's why you got to sow your way out. Sow is cooperation. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 11. Oh, Corinthians. Oh, Floridians. We have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your emotional, soulish realm. Now, in return to the same, I speak as to children. You also be open. Do not be unevenly yoked together with an unbeliever because you're going to get a lot of problems. And don't be yoked with a carnal unbeliever. Or a counter so called believer. <laughs> well, they're a believer. Oh, the, yes, I believe God. Well, let me tell you a, a true Christian man or woman will not sleep with you until married. Does everybody get that? Other than that, they're not true. Well, they can read the Bible. They can go to church, but they're carnal. And you're not to be yoked with them. Hello. Now I understand that when people are not true believers yet, and they're living a life together and so forth, well then when they want to change their lives, they become believers. Either they both change, and they want to do the right thing, they don't sleep together until they're married, or they book. And I'd rather say, see ya, and wait for God to send the right one the one that's not willing to cooperate or conform to the ways of God. Does everybody get it? Do not be unevenly yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has the believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with an idol? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them, I'll walk among them, I'll be their God, and I'll be, and they'll be my people if they do something. If they come out from among them and be separated, says the Lord. And don't touch what is unclean. In other words, don't yoke yourself again with the entanglements and affairs of this world of worldliness, earthly living. And I'll be a father, and you shall be my sons and daughters says the Lord of mine. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us, let us cleanse ourselves. In other words, let us cut loose from these entanglements and from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit and perfecting holiness in the what? Fear and reverence of God. That's rejoining yourself in the unity of the spirit, breaking every yoke of bondage through the anointing 
to live a life in the Spirit. A life in the Spirit has no bondages. 1 John chapter 2. Is everybody okay? One more scripture. Life in the Spirit. So life in the Spirit isn't just about the gifts of the Spirit. Does everybody understand that? People can still move in the gifts of the Spirit and go to hell. Jesus warned them. He said, because they came proclaiming their works and their deeds. But Lord, I cast out devils. I prophesied. They, so they were using the gifts of the Spirit. They were baptized in the Holy Spirit, but became carnal. He says, I don't know you. I don't know you. Because you're carnal. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15. That's why he warned them, do not love the world or the things in the world, right? If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. There you are. Those are the main three categories. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Those are the three categories that can keep Christians carnal. And carnality will not allow you into the kingdom. And the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides for forever. Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they'd been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made what? Manifest. That none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. That's if you're walking in the anointing. If you're yielding to the Spirit. If you're allowing Him access to every part of your life. If you're releasing your control. And I want to close it, Isaiah 10. Not bondage. Not carnality. Not flesh. You can't be holy unless you're joined with the Holy One. You can't be righteous unless you're joined with the righteous one. You can't have life unless you're joined with life. Isaiah 10, 27. Let's speak together. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck. And the yoke will be destroyed because of the what? Anointing oil. Because of the what? Anointing oil. That is the anointing. Where there is unity, the anointing is released. When the anointing is released, there is life. Amen? So we must battle to maintain unity, regardless of what. One of the things that cause much division is the tongue. Amen. If you don't have control of your tongue, someone does. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. We are blessed and honored for your counsel, correction, and direction. We accept all of your conviction today in every area. Let your mercies and grace abound and we do cast our cares upon you and commit to you our works. We trust in you, Lord. We ask that you take your rightful place in every part of our being and members and expose and remove those things that offend you so that it can be exchanged for the anointing. Lord, let there be no division, not only among us, but within us. 
or in our homes. Lord, drive out all spirits of division and corruption. And let peace, joy, and righteousness and the unity of the Spirit be manifest, that we may all be unified, like-minded, like-willed, like-hearted, like-purpose, for your glory in you, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.